Hey everybody, I'm Mr. Hartzler, and I want to talk to you in this video a little bit about dial calipers. So there are a couple of things that are very important. First, they work better outside of the box. So we take these out of the box. Uh, in my room, they are in the tallest filing cabinet, not the cabinet, the tallest filing cabinet. And it is in the, I think, third drawer up. It's labeled dial caliper, so you'll see it. But take it out of the box, and I'm gonna grab some stuff for us to measure. There's some blocks. All right, first we need to make sure that it is zeroed. So that means I'm gonna grab these two jaws, kind of pull them together a little bit so that they are touching. And then I'm gonna look in here and uh, it might be a little hard to see, but we are just a tiny bit off. We are not exactly at the zero. So I'm going to loosen this bottom knob here just a, just a little, that much, just a quarter turn or so. And I'm gonna turn this dial until it is perfectly lined up with the zero. Tighten this one. Oh, it actually moved a little bit on me while I did that. So I'm gonna loosen it back up. I'm gonna hold it while I tighten this screw. All right, zeroed up this screw here. Let's make sure that one's loose. So now it is tight. Loosen it up a little bit, good. This wheel, they don't all have that. So you might have to just use this little black piece to pull it back and forth, but We'll go from here. So if I pull it out and get the uh, bottom jaw here out of the way a little bit, you can hopefully see these numbers. I'm gonna zoom in just a touch more. All right, hopefully that's not too pixely for you. These go in decimal inches. So if I start here at the zero, I then have one, two, three, four, up to nine. Then I go to one. That is one full inch. That means this seven is 0.7 inches. So as I'm measuring this, I start at the zero and I come up. Well, let's uh, let's put it right here. The number, you'll notice, is on the left of the dash. So the zero is on the left of that dash, one is on the left of the next one, and so on. So I see this seven, and then I have that line past it. That means I've actually passed the seven. So I'm 0.7 something. I am 0.7, and then let's, uh, let's right. Now I pass seven, let's leave it right there. So I am 0 0.7, because I can see that line past it, one, and then I am at, what's that at? One, two, three, four, five, I'm at the fifth. So I am 0 0.715, or 0.7, and then a 15, so, 0.7 and then a 15 is 0.715. I measure out to the thousandths place with this dial caliper. So let's actually measure something. I'm gonna grab this little block. Should be a three quarters of an inch. Close into my jaws. Notice I just pushed it up and it's not super in there tight, but I can't wiggle it a whole lot either. There's no play in it wiggling this way. There's just play in it because it's spinning a little bit. So let's see how big this is. I am 0 0.7, I am 0.7 because I can see the line past it. So you can start to see the eight. I'm not actually at eight yet though, I can't see the line past it. So I'm still 0 0.7, 50. So 0 0.750, 0 0.750, awesome. That's actually exactly what this block is supposed to be. One of the things my students are gonna do um, the next day we're in class is measure these different blocks but now I just turned it. Notice, I pulled this out, I had it in here, I had it one particular way, well, and now I move it a little bit and it has changed. So let's look at it now. We're still 0 0.7, I see the hair of the eight, but I can't see the line, so I'm 0 0.758. 58. So I am, here's my 50, and then five, six, seven, eight. So I am 0.758. I'm going to take it out and spin it around again. This one, I am 0 0.751, and actually a little bit. I'm between 51 and 52. So I'm going to write 0.7515. I'm actually going to go out just a little bit past that one. I'm not quite to the two, so I'm going to say it's in the middle there. And this one, I'm actually going out to the 10 thousandths place. 
That's what Project Lead the Way recommends we do. What are we at? We're at five minutes. I think that's about it. Oh, one more. Let's do another example just so you can see it. If I keep pulling, keep pulling, let's put two things in there. All right. Now I go from the zero. See this big one? Now I'm at one full inch. And then I go over to 0 0.5, 1.5. I can, in fact, see that line past the 5, so I am at 1.5. And then up here I am at 11 and a half. So I am at 1.5 and then 11 and a half. So 1.5, 115, or 1, and 5,115 ten thousandths if you want to be very fancy like that um, that is what we're going to be doing the next day in class folks it is also important to notice that there are other features here so uh, if you're just wanting to work on stuff in class that's about as far as you need to know if you want to just be a little bit more knowledgeable and know how else to use these keep watching so let's uh, keep our jaw closed and now we're going to open it to measure this gap you'll notice here the smooth edges are on the outside instead of the inside like here in the claw. So we spread these out. I can measure my gap. So I'm going to measure it and pull it straight out. I am at 0.5 because I see the line past it. Uh, and that's at 10. So 0 0.510. And yes, I would actually write all of that. 0 0.510. This zero is important because that actually shows you I measured all the way out to the thousandths place. I could also measure using this other end with how deep something is. So I'm going to have it stick out a little bit by, oh, let me zoom out. By scrolling this out a little bit, let's pull it out. Notice that's kind of long. I'm now going to move this a little bit. Oh, let's go this way. All right, oh, that's not too bad. So now I'm going to push this down until this little edge catches on top, of, on front of the thing I'm catching and right there, I know that's kind of hard to see, but this little piece sticking out was down on the bottom. This edge was sitting on top. And let's see what our measurement was. There we go. We were at, too close, 0 0.151. And uh, that's not too bad. So that is pretty much all you need to know to use the dial caliper. We used the claw, we used uh, these grippers, and we used the little plunger here. And again, make sure this screw is loose otherwise, because that's actually how you measure it and you stick it so that you can walk away and it doesn't move. We want that to be loose so that it can free float. Make sure you actually pass that little line. It's like right now, I'm actually not at the 0.5 mark. And it's a little easy too if you kind of go to where it's at zero. All right, I'm just a touch past it. I can see just a touch of that line. So that is how we use a dial caliper in my intro engineering design class that is based on and actually is a part of project lead the way hopefully this was helpful if it was click that like button down below and if you want to subscribe you get to see more videos like this and sometimes they're good so have a great day folks and don't do drugs